In this video, I would like to discuss some of the limitations of the muscle control formula. First, it's important to realize that the muscle control formula is a mental model or construct. Mental models are simplified versions of reality that help us understand that reality a little bit better. But by their very nature of being simplified versions of reality, all mental models are going to have certain limitations or restrictions. The muscle control formula is no different. Let's look at a couple of these limitations in more detail. The first limitation is going to involve rapid multi-joint movement. This movement here is represented by a rapid movement of the leg, such as in a kick. During this movement, we're going to have rapid accelerations and decelerations of both the hip and the knee. Rapid accelerations of the hip is going to affect the knee and vice versa. These are known as interaction torques, and I'll talk more about those in a separate video. Our second limitation involves when we have a rapid movement that starts with zero velocity and ends with zero velocity. Let's return to the example of where we're doing horizontal adduction in the transverse plane. When this movement was being performed slowly, I said the movement was being controlled by the horizontal adductors acting concentrically. But now in this video, we're going to see what happens when the arm is moving rapidly. Before doing so, though, let's return to an example I gave in a previous video where we were bringing a cup to our mouth. Recall that I said at the beginning of the movement, the velocity of the cup was going to be zero. Then we were going to move that cup to our mouth. When the cup got to our mouth, the velocity had better be zero, or we might be in for some pretty expensive dental work. Remember that the movement of the cup during this example was going from left to right. Now let's examine how that movement occurred. The whole time the cup was moving from left to right. Initially the cup sped up, but then during the latter half of the movement the cup had to slow down in order to return back to a zero velocity. Things that are speeding up require an acceleration that are going to be in the direction of travel. When things are slowing down we have to have an acceleration that would be opposite of the direction of travel. So first we're going to speed up that's going to be the result of an acceleration in the direction of travel. We'll hit some peak velocity and then we'll slow down. That slowing down is going to be a result of an acceleration that's opposite of the direction of travel. Now, where do these accelerations come from? Recall that all accelerations come from effective forces and that effective forces are always going to be in the direction of the acceleration. So initially when we're speeding up, and we have an acceleration that's in the direction of travel, that's going to be the result of an effective force that's also in the direction of travel. During the latter portion of the movement when we are slowing down, we have an acceleration that's opposite of the direction of travel, and that means that we have to have an effective force that would also be opposite of the direction of travel. Now let's return to our horizontal adduction example. In this case, the arm is moving from position A to position B. So you see that our direction of travel here is going to be a counterclockwise movement. When the movement was sufficiently slow, we said that this movement was being controlled concentrically by the horizontal adductors. But now we're going to move fast. And just like with the cup, when we are moving fast, initially the arm is going to end up speeding up but then if I'm going to stop at zero velocity at the end of the movement, the arm is going to have to slow down. Another way we can think about these speeding up and slowing down are concentric and eccentric phases of the movement. So during the concentric phase of the movement, the arm is going to speed up, and during the eccentric phase of the movement, the arm is going to slow down. Also recall from the muscle control formula that we talked about having an axis of rotation and that muscles on one side of that axis shortening while muscles on the opposite side of that joint 
lengthening. It's going to be no different here. So we can see that the muscles that are anterior to our axis of rotation are going to be shortening. These are our horizontal adductors, and it's no different from our example of when the arm is moving slowly. The MTCs on the opposite side of that joint are going to be lengthening. In this case, these are going to be our horizontal abductors or our horizontal extensors. And again, this was no different than what we did when the arm was moving slowly. The difference now is going to be in terms of how this movement is being controlled. During the concentric phase of the activity, the MTCs that are shortening are going to control the movement. This is again no different from the muscle control formula that we did before. During the eccentric phase of the movement, the MTCs that are lengthening are going to end up controlling the movement. Again, this is no different from what we did with the muscle control formula. The only difference here is that now we see both concentric and eccentric control during the same activity. During the first portion of the movement, when we are speeding up, it's going to be controlled concentrically. And then during the second phase of the movement, when things are slowing down, things are going to be controlled eccentrically. It's also important to note here that we have the antagonistic muscle groups that are controlling the movement. If I return here for a second to the concentric phase, we see that it's the horizontal flexors or the horizontal adductors that are controlling the movement concentrically. During the latter portion of the movement, we see that it's going to be the horizontal abductors or the horizontal extensors that are controlling that movement eccentrically. And this is where the muscle control formula breaks down a little bit. Recall when the arm is moving sufficiently slowly, the whole movement was being controlled concentrically by the horizontal adductors. Now that we're moving fast, when the, movement, when the arm is speeding up, it's going to be controlled concentrically by the horizontal adductors. But then in order to slow down, we have to switch control to the antagonistic muscle group. In this case, the horizontal abductors or the horizontal extensors acting eccentrically. So if ever there is a change in the MTC control during a movement, you should probably break that movement down into phases in order to analyze it a little bit more easily. This is something that we'll see in later videos. So in this video, we discussed some of the limitations of the muscle control formula. First, we saw with rapid multi-joint movement that acceleration of any one joint in the chain is going to affect accelerations at all other joints in the chain. This is something we'll return to as a more advanced topic. The second example looked at what happened when we had a rapid movement that started with zero velocity and ended with zero velocity. If the movement is sufficiently slow, that entire movement is going to be controlled by the agonistic muscle groups acting concentrically. But if the movement is fast and we have to start at zero and end at zero, the initial speeding up phase of the movement is going to be controlled by that agonistic muscle group acting concentrically. But then during the latter portion of the movement, that control has to switch to the antagonistic muscle groups in order to control that movement eccentrically.